with Season 4, Bone Spirit is stronger than ever. One of the significant changes made with the season is that Bone Spirit is now considered a core skill. This changes the way it interacts with certain items and abilities and opens up a number of new builds. This build makes use of the Banished Lord's Talisman to allow Bone Spirit to constantly overpower. This allows it to take advantage of the various overpower multipliers, resulting in extremely high damage. It is a very versatile build capable of handling both single target and AoE and effectively clearing any content in the base game, as well as pushing high pit tiers. The major downside of the build is that the gearing requirements are relatively stringent and is dependent on hitting several stat breakpoints, which makes it only suitable for the late end game. If you want to see the build in action, a recent pit run can be found in the description below. Since the build is highly dependent on reaching certain breakpoints through items, we will begin with gear. One thing that should be noted is that at the time of recording, the Rapid Ossification Passive, which reduces Bone Skill cooldowns when spending Essence, does not seem to affect Bone Spirit's cooldown. This is different from previous seasons and it is not clear if this is intended. This has some implications for how gearing should be handled. For now, the gear is based on how the passive works as of the date of recording, but I have included an appendix regarding how to gear if this change is reversed. The build relies on reaching certain breakpoints. First, it is necessary to reach 100% crit chance. This is in order to take advantage of Bone Spirit's ability to reduce its cooldown by 7 seconds if it crits. Second, it is necessary to get Bone Spirit's cooldown to 7 seconds. This is so that we can instantly cast Bone Spirit again after it hits. Cooldown reduction can roll on the Helm, Amulet, or Focus slots, and there is a tempering for Bone Spirit cooldown on the Ring or Amulet slots. Since the build uses the Banished Lord's Talisman in the Amulet slot, we will need cooldown reduction on both the Helm and Focus slots as well as tempering Bone Spirit cooldown on one of the Ring slots to reach the 7 second breakpoint. For ease of calculation, we will assume that base cooldown reduction on the helm and focus slots are 8% before masterworking. The easiest way to reach the cooldown breakpoint is by having an item with a greater affix on cooldown reduction on either the focus or helm slots and an item with a base 8% cooldown reduction on the other slot. This will allow us to reach the breakpoint when the items are masterworked up to rank 11 without needing to crit on any affix. Without a greater affix, you can also reach the breakpoint by having 19.5% or higher on the Bone Spirit cooldown reduction roll on the ring. This is achievable at rank 11 masterworking without critting with a base 14% roll before masterworking or critting once with a 12% roll. If you need to crit on an affix, I recommend masterworking up to rank 4 and resetting until it crits. You can also reach the breakpoint by critting on both the helm and focus once, assuming you have a base 8% roll. This will reach the breakpoint even with a minimum roll on the ring. I cannot cover all the possibilities for reaching the 7 second cooldown, just be aware that you can always check your cooldown by hovering over the icon in the skill bar. Second, it is necessary to reach 100% crit chance. Crit chance can roll on the gloves, ring, and offhand slots. When calculating your crit chance, be sure to include the 20% from Bone Storm, 10% from Ghastly Bone Spirit, 4% bonus to Bone Skill Crit Chance from the Paragon Board, as well as any bonuses to Bone Skill Crit Chance on Tempered Gear, and the bonuses from the Swelling Curse aspect or Inspiring Leader if you choose to include those. If you are capable of reaching 100% Crit Chance without Swelling Curse, I recommend replacing it with either Grasping Veins or Conceited Aspect. Besides reaching those breakpoints, you will need the Banished Lord's Talisman in the Amulet slot and Blood Moon Breaches in the Pants slot. Banished Lord's Talisman will allow Bone Spirit to overpower after spending 275 Essence and is the basis for how the build works. Blood Moon Breaches will increase overpower damage by 70% if the enemy is cursed and also provides some additional damage and damage reduction via curses. For your rings, try to get Crit Chance. Attack speed is also a good stat to have in order to allow us to quickly spend essence 
and activate Banished Lord's Talisman. For your tempers, one of the resource tempers should be Bone Spirit Cooldown. The other should be Macabre Skills Restore Primary Resource. Please note that this is based on how rapid ossification works as of the time of recording. Refer to the appendix if the change to rapid ossification is reversed. For the offensive temper, the ideal stat is Bone Spirit Damage. For the aspects, one of them should be Shattered Spirit to help with essence generation. For the aspects on the other ring, Weapon, Focus, and Glove slots, good options include Serration, Conceited, or Grasping Veins for damage, Osseous Gale if you need higher Bone Storm uptime, Swelling Curse if you need to reach 100% crit, or Ultimate Shadow to help with Shielding Storm. For your focus, besides cooldown reduction, good stats to have include crit chance and max resource. For tempers, try to get bone storm duration for the weapon temper and bone spirit damage for the offensive temper. For your weapon, try to get intelligence, max life, and overpower damage or crit damage. Try to get bone storm duration or bone spirit size for the weapon temper. Which one you choose is up to preference though Bone Storm duration is probably better against bosses in high-tier pits. For the offensive temper, try to get Bone Spirit damage. One interesting choice for the weapon slot is Doombringer. This will greatly increase survivability for higher-tier pits, and the additional damage to overpower from increased health will offset some of the losses from losing a tempering slot. For your gloves, try to get crit chance and ranks to core skills. For your offensive temper, Try to get Bone Spirit damage and a Utility Temper of your choice. I personally like Barrier Generation. Corpse Tendril Size or Decrepify Size are also both good options. For your Helm, best in slot is Harlequin Crest. If you do not have Harlequin Crest, try to get a Helm with cooldown reduction. Other good stats to have include Max Resource, Max Life, Intelligence or Armor if you need to reach the cap. For the Defensive Temper, Get armor percent if you need to reach the cap and a utility aspect of your choice. For the chest, try to get plus ranks to macabre skills. Other good stats to have include intelligence and life. If you are using Harlequin Crest or have otherwise not reached the armor cap, get armor percent here on the defensive temper. Utility aspect is up to you. For the aspects, I recommend putting Shielding Storm on the chest and Hardened Bones in the helm if you are not using Harlequin Crest. For the boots, try to get ranks to Bone Spirit and Movement Speed. For the Mobility Temper, try to get another roll of Movement Speed. Utility Temper is up to you. For the aspect, I have Metamorphosis. Aspect of Slaughter is also a good option, especially for speed farming if you are able to maintain barrier uptime through Shielding Storm. Moving on to the skill tree, we begin by placing one point each into Bone Splinters, Enhanced Bone Splinters, and Initiates Bone Splinters. We place a point into Initiates Bone Splinters because it gives Bone Splinters a 20% chance of applying Vulnerable on Hit, which also applies to the Splinters cast from the Shattered Spirits aspect. Next, we max out on Living Energy and Imperfectly Balanced for the extra Essence and Damage. Moving on, we place one point into Blood Mist and one point into Enhanced Blood Mist. Enhanced Blood Mist reduces the cooldown of Blood Mist every time we overpower, which synergizes well with our build. We also place one point each into Bone Prison, Enhanced Bone Prison, and Dreadful Bone Prison for crowd control. We also max out Spiked Armor for the extra armor. These points can be reallocated if your armor is already capped. Next, we max out Amplify Damage and place one point each into Decrepify, Enhanced Decrepify, and Abhorrent Decrepify. Decrepify will provide damage reduction, crowd control, increase damage via the Amplify Damage passive, as well as activate Blood Moon Breaches when we overpower. We also max out Death's Embrace for the damage reduction. In the next node, we max out Bone Spirit and take Ghastly Bone Spirit for the extra crit chance. We also place a point into Serration and max out Compound Fracture, Evulsion, and Rapid Ossification. Since we will be spending and generating resources quickly, 
rapid ossification will allow us to efficiently reduce our bone storm cooldown. We also place one point into corpse tendrils and one point into enhanced corpse tendrils. We do not need to take plagued corpse tendrils since initiates bone splinters will apply vulnerable. If you did not take initiates bone splinters, you can allocate the point here. Next, we max out standalone and memento mori and place three points into bone storm. If you have not reached the cap for crit chance, you can also max out inspiring leader for the crit chance when healthy. Finally, we take ossified essence as our key passive. For the Book of the Dead, we sacrifice skirmishers for the crit chance, bone mages for the bonus to overpower damage, and iron golem for the extra crit damage. Moving on to the Paragon board, we begin by equipping Amplify on the starting board for the bonus damage to cursed enemies. Our next board is Bone Graft. We take the Reinvigorate Rare node for the max essence, Tenacity for defense, and Tomb for the bonus to crit chance, as well as the legendary node. We equip Sacrificial as our glyph since we have no minions, and to amplify the surrounding nodes. The next board is Bloodbath. We take the Thick Hide Rare node for the health, Suffused Resilience for the resist and damage reduction against damage over time, as well as the Legendary node, which will provide a 35% bonus to our overpowers. We equip Essence as our glyph for the bonuses to crit damage and take just enough dex to activate the glyph. Next, we take the Flesh Eater board and equip the Dominate glyph for the bonuses to overpower damage as well as the Erudite Rare node for resistances. Our next board is Blood Begets Blood. We take the Aggression Rare node for the bonus to overpower and equip Corporeal as our glyph to amplify the surrounding overpower damage magic nodes. Our final board is Scent of Death. We equip the Territorial Glyph for the damage reduction against close enemies as well as the Legendary node. I mentioned earlier that the functionality of rapid ossification has been changed as of the time of recording and that it is unclear if this was intentional. If this was not intended and rapid ossification works like it did in the past, we will need to make the following changes. Assuming rapid ossification works like it did in the past, rapid ossification will reduce Bone Spirit's cooldown by 1.5 seconds for every 100 essence spent. Our goal is to generate at least 100 essence per cast in order to consistently activate rapid ossification. This will allow us to reach the Bone Spirit cooldown breakpoint without having to temper Bone Spirit cooldown on the ring and replace it with Macabre Skills Restore Essence, which will increase our damage since Bone Spirit scales with amount of essence on cast. For this to be possible, we will need to have Macabre Skills restore Essence on both rings as well as have Harlequin Crest. Harlequin Crest has the Resource Generation stat, which does not roll on normal helms, which will increase the amount of Essence generated from the Macabre Skills restore Essence stat. The Banished Lord's Talisman also includes Resource Generation as a roll. With sufficiently high rolls of Essence on Cast and Resource Generation, on both Harlequin Crest and Banished Lord's Talisman, it should be possible to reach 100 essence per cast, especially if the essence generated from Shattered Spirit is included. You can calculate essence per cast as follows. I will use my character as an example. First, you add the essence generated from the Macabre Skills Restore Essence stat on both rings. In my case, it is 32 plus 27 for a total of 59, you then multiply this total by the Essence Generation stat on your character stats. In my case, I have a Essence Generation bonus of 38.4%, so 59 times 1.384 is 81.66. You then multiply this resulting total by the bonus to Resource Generation from Willpower, which can be found on your character sheet. Mine is 14.5%, so 81.66 times 1.145 is about 93.5. This is not quite 100, but should go over 100 with the essence generated from Shattered Spirit, which is 6 per hit, plus any bonuses from the resource generation stat and willpower. 
by using rapid ossification, the necessary breakpoint is now 8.5 seconds instead of 7. This is achievable at rank 11 masterworking without any crits with Harlequin Crest and a 8% cooldown reduction before masterworking on the focus. Finally, it should be noted that even if rapid ossification is changed to work as it did in the past, the gearing explained in the main section of this video is still valid and is easier to gear for than the setup mentioned here. I hope you found this video helpful. Feel free to leave any comments below and please consider subscribing if you are interested in this type of content. Good luck and thanks for watching.